I think caffeine could be an absolutely amazing streaming platform. It's just not right now. All right, before I get into it today, I want to remind you guys to hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell. Helps me out a ton. Also, don't forget, too, to join the Discord. Link below. As well as checking out all my social media. Please also don't forget that I do stream on Twitch. Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And now I'm also streaming on YouTube. Every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I've been teasing for about a week now that I was going to do a brutally honest review of Caffeine's streaming service. I don't want to sit here and just shit all over the service. It's actually a pretty good service. They've got some good things about it, but they've also got some things that, at least in my opinion, they need to fix. We're going to start with the pros. I want to start it off on a good, you know, positive note here. So the first pro is that it is a new platform. New platform means less competition. I believe that they exited their beta on January 1st of 2020. While most businesses suffered last year, any streaming platforms actually did quite well with the pandemic, everybody being home, everybody decided to be a content creator, including yours truly. But anytime you've got a new platform out there, that means that there's less competition, there's less people. So you don't have person A over here that you have to compete with, taking viewers away from your stream while you're trying to do your thing, right? That's great. Also, Caffeine has got a really cool feature where they have an instant interaction with chat. So that means that as soon as you, as the user, hit enter on your chat, it immediately shows up and the streamer sees it and they can interact with you in real time. It's actually pretty cool. Also, if you're somebody who is not tech savvy and you're not really quite sure how to use OBS, you don't really have to know how to use OBS if you're streaming your PC gameplay. Caffeine has a desktop app that you can download that actually automatically picks up anytime you're playing a video game on your PC and all you have to configure is your mic and your camera. And the app actually does a lot of that for you as well as giving you the option to broadcast to social media whenever you go live. Functions of OBS, but you don't have to figure out how those work and you also don't have to figure out how to make all these other things work like bit rates and down sampling and all that mess. There's also a really cool app out there from some developers um, for a plugin called Caffeine, for a plugin called Caffeinated, that gives you Twitch functionality. When I say Twitch functionality, I mean like sound alerts for followers, for people that tip. Um, you can do emote walls. You can have scrolling chat on your overlays. It's actually a really cool service, and I've got to hand it to the guys at the Caffeinated plug-in they did an amazing job trying to make sure that these features were integrated in, into your overlays and the last pro that i want to talk about because i'm not sure that this is a thing maybe i'm misunderstanding it if you're a developer with caffeine um or you know you're somebody that's kind of in the know on caffeine and can understand what this is for maybe you can explain this better than i can caffeine does not support every single game out there because they actually take the time to go in and have coding put into the meta descriptions of whatever content you're providing. So they have an invisible overlay where the AI detects whatever the content is and it automatically puts that that's the game that you're playing or that's the thing that you're doing. The only thing I can think that would make this advantageous is if you're trying to protect against DMCA. So as most of you know, Twitch has been kind of a shit show when it comes to DMCA this past year. They've been hit pretty hard and they've been openly criticized for their lack of transparency when it comes to how they're going to fix this problem twitch I'm talking to you and they've also been heavily scrutinized and criticized about how they're going to help creators one of the things that they have offered creators which was the most tone deaf piece of advice that they could have offered is to mute your game audio the only thing that i can think that would make this an advantage with caffeine is that if the ai is detecting that Maybe it's detecting what the game is, so that way you can say that it is fair use because gameplay of a video game is fair use even if there's certain things playing in the game because gameplay is subjective. It's not the same for every single person. Each person is going to approach and play the game a little bit differently than the other person before them. So the content within the game would fall under fair use, therefore helping them to avoid copyright strikes. Apparently, unless you're Twitch. Now the cons for this is that 
it's primarily a battle wrapping and an esports platform. So if you're somebody that likes to play RPGs or JRPGs, if you're creative like someone that does music or art, or if you're someone that just genuinely just likes to have a just chatting stream, I know creators like Sweet Anita, uh, she likes to get on there and um, she likes to talk to her chat and her community. Uh, she has Tourette's and so she likes to, you know, talk with them about that and some of the struggles that she's dealt with. She does some mental health stuff on there, uh, but she does do some gameplay. But if you're somebody who does that, news commentary, whatever, um, you're not really gonna have a very good time on this platform, in my opinion. I know I didn't. Those categories are not very well supported. They support games like Final Fantasy VII, VIII, and IX, which are 20 something years old, but don't support Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was just released last year. Which leads me to another problem with caffeine is that they don't have categories, so there's no real discoverability. So if you have somebody on there that's playing, say, Destiny, or you want to watch somebody play Final Fantasy, uh, you're not going to be able to find that. The people that are on there that are playing that are going to be very hard to find because it is so wildly populated by battle rappers and esports players. It is going to be very difficult since you can't search for people playing specific games or even in a specific category like RPGs. Another issue is that there's no real engagement for the audience. The only thing you have is the instant chat. Now this is a problem for the creator, which I'll get to in a minute, but the issue for the audience side is that the only thing that they have are emotes that you have to spend what they call gold on. Now, if you've got credits that have been given to you, you can, you can convert credits into gold. People can then give to the creator as they're going, kind of like the way bits work on Twitch. But the problem is, is that one, their gold that you that you have to purchase to get the money to do this is, to me, wildly overpriced. And the other thing is, too, is, is that you have to pay to use emotes. This was a terrible idea. I don't know who thought about this, but y'all need to change that. The other issue, too, with chat engagement is that the chat doesn't actually scroll. It works in kind of like a pop-up video, kind of like VH1 did. Maybe they still do where it would just randomly pop up little bubbles all over the music video and give you little facts here and there. And the chat log on caffeine for the end user works very much the same way. And it is very random and it doesn't come in successive order. Why is this an issue? If you have somebody is in your chat and they're trying to tell a story, you will get to see a scrolling chat log so you know what's going in successive order but the audience members do not it's coming in out of order kind of like the old cell phone text messages from years ago now the other issue remember how i told you about the instant interactivity and how this actually is a problem in certain areas if you are a creator you likely don't really want to sit there and watch your views tank as you go through trying to build up your community I know for me personally, I've actually turned off my viewer count because I don't want to know the people that are watching my chat. Now, when I get to the level of somebody like, you know, Harris Heller with Alpha Gaming, which if you're watching, <laughs> thanks, or somebody like Ninja or Shroud, you're probably watching those metrics and wanting to look at those things because you want to know what you're doing and what you're not doing right. But if you're a smaller streamer and you're still trying to build your community, the last thing you want to know is how much people do or don't like you. And with caffeine, there's a constant scrolling log in real time of when people join your chat and leave your chat. And then join your chat and leave your chat. And the AI does not distinguish between internet blips and people actually leaving your chat. So you could have somebody that's repeatedly leaving and joining and leaving and joining and leaving and joining. Me personally as a smaller creator, like I said, I don't like watching my views. I don't like seeing who's viewing. If you want to talk, talk. If you don't, then don't. Whatever. I don't want to see the number of people that are viewing my chat. I just, I don't want to see that. It brings down my mood. If it brings down my mood and my vibe, it's going to bring down the vibe of the stream. And as a creator, I have to be the one to be able to keep things going and keep you know the hype and everything going for my chat obviously at some point when i get a big enough audience you know they are the ones kind of feeding off my energy but if i've got a two-person stream and my vibe is going down i'm going to be very quickly at a zero person stream and which also creates a whole nother issue in itself in that you cannot lurk on caffeine with, without being called out because the culture of caffeine is to immediately greet people when they join your chat 
So if you're used to joining a chat and sitting back and watching it for a little bit before you decide to engage, <laughs> you're not going to do that on caffeine because they're going to know immediately. Another thing that I want to discuss is the fact that they have a mostly closed API. Notice I said mostly closed because remember I told you about the caffeinated app back just a little bit ago. Well, the issue is, is that they don't have it open for plugin companies like Stream Elements or Streamlabs. So if you wanted to be able to have the kind of functionality like sound commands and things like that in your overlays, you're not going to be able to do that with caffeine. Mainly because they have an outdated version of OBS that is pretty much broken in almost every way, shape, form, or fashion, especially if you try to update it. It also does not support the functionality for Elgato Stream Deck. So if you're somebody who's used to using a Stream Deck, guess what? <laughs> no more button pushing for it to do multiple things. You have to do all those yourself. Whatever you have your Elgato Stream Deck doing, you now have to do yourself because you cannot get the plugin to work with the OBS. And if you try to update it where it can have that functionality, it breaks the OBS to where it no longer will stream to your account. The last thing that I wanna cover about Caffeine, which is probably one of the most damning things for me. When I first started Caffeine, their caster program is basically the same thing as Twitch's affiliate program, which then you had to have one average view, you had to have 20 unique days broadcasted, and I think it was like eight to 10 hours of broadcasted time. Maybe I'm not confusing that with Twitch. Also had to have 100 followers. If you're a small streamer on an up and coming platform, with only a few thousand creators, which with most of those being battle rappers and esports people, and you're an RPG player, or you're a creative doing music or art, or you're somebody that's doing a just chatting or news sections or whatever, guess what? People can't search for you. And because there's no discoverability, the ability for you to get followers is gonna be very, very, very difficult. This has been compounded by the fact that now Caffeine has upped their requirements for their caster program to now you have to have five average views, still have 100 followers, but now you have to have 30 total days streamed with 20 hours. Now the hours streamed and the days are not just quite that big of a deal, but getting 100 followers on a platform that already is stacked against you, as well as getting five average views, that's not gonna work out very well. Especially when your stream is being recommended to people that watch battle rapping in esports, which is exactly what happened to me. Now ultimately, Caffeine is a good platform. They're not all bad. There's a lot of things that they actually have going very well for them. I think the instant interactivity is amazing. I think that's an amazing opportunity to build a community with people to where they don't have to sit and wait almost a minute at some points to be able to get a response from you when they ask you a question in chat. However, if the functionalities that you need to be able to grow as a streamer are not there, not available, because they're focusing on the wrong things, it's not going to be a platform that ends up being a contender with Twitch or YouTube at any point in time. I think Caffeine could be an absolutely amazing streaming platform. It's just not right now. So what do y'all think? Have I been fair in my review? Do y'all feel like I have been balanced? Do y'all feel like I tried to give them a fair shot? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also, if you're somebody that's a developer for Caffeine or you're somebody that works for Caffeine and you saw this review, if you feel like I have not been fair, please, in the comments below, feel free to drop it in there and let me know if I got something wrong, if there's something I said that wasn't quite right. I'm always encouraged to be able to engage with people that view my content. And I also wanna make sure that it's fair and I wanna make sure that it's accurate. I appreciate you guys watching. Peace out. Would y'all stop licking me, please? I'm tired of all these monsters licking me. I feel like I'm in a hentai. I'm waiting for one of them to sprout tentacles.